Hello and welcome back to Guillotined 18th Century Chemist Theater. We have a lot to cover today, so let's jump right in. We are going to try to classify all matter. So do not let that time us fool you. We are in for quite a haul here. So all matter can be classified as either a pure substance or a mixture. But what better way to start it with some koala-based humor? And again, if you don't know the koala, you haven't been watching the other lessons. Good times, good times. So everything is either a pure substance or a mixture. A pure substance is matter composed of only one type of atom or molecule. And so you have things like elements, o oxygen, ozone, neon, gold, and compounds, uh, methane, sugar, water. These are all pure substances because they have a specific chemical and physical property. They are only one type of substance. So they're pure. They cannot be physically simplified. So when we talk about ways to uh, separate matter, that will not work on a pure substance, whether it's an element or a compound. So that's a good way of identifying that you found a pure substance. And so the two types of pure substances are elements or compounds. They fit in nicely under there in the classification tree. Ah, tree-based humor. And so the element is one type of pure substance. Uh, and this is a pure substance that cannot be physically or chemically simplified. You've certainly learned about elements in other classes. There's about 90 naturally occurring elements. I can say with confidence, we've discovered every naturally occurring element in the universe. And, and once we understand what differentiates elements, you'll see what, how we can make such a bold statement. Uh, we continue to discover elements, but they are artificially created in the laboratory. They are too unstable to exist in nature. So unless there is some uh, sea of super stability out there of, of super heavy elements we have not yet discovered, uh, we have found every element in the universe. And so the atom is that manifestation of an element. It's the smallest unit of an element that still retains the properties. So I could take that gold and I could tease out one atom of gold. Some element definitions you might need to know. Diatomic elements are molecules composed of two identical atoms, like diatomic oxygen, diatomic nitrogen. That's about 98-99% of what you breathe in are diatomic molecules. Allotropes are uh, different uh, physical manifestations of the same element. So oxygen and ozone are both gases containing oxygen. O2 we want to breathe in. O3 is a pollutant, although we certainly have ozone protecting the planet in the ozone layer. And we continue to discover more allotropes of carbon. Uh, when I was in high school, we just had the, um, the diamond and the graphite, but we certainly have the buckyball and nanotubes and even graphene now. Compounds, on the other hand, are pure substances composed of two or more elements chemically combined. And so when you look at the chemical formula, it's extremely easy to tell that you have a compound because you're going to have more than one element in it. Um, unlike elements, which are uh, limited to about 120, uh, you have an infinite number of compounds because we can put elements together all we want, although they are still a pure substance with specific chemical and physical properties. So if you have sugar and somebody else has sugar, uh, they should have the exact same chemical and physical properties if they are pure substances. And the molecule then is the smallest part of a compound that still has the properties of that compound, much like an atom is to element. And so we can take a glass of water and tease out one molecule of water. So there's a great analogy there. Elements are to uh, letters as compounds are to words. We can take letters and form words, even though we only have so many letters. We have an infinite number of words, and we can form an infinite number of compounds, and people are doing that every day. If you get a, the reference to Shmegalamunga, uh, you watch too many old movies. Movies that you probably can't find in a video store, to be honest. And so if you're not a pure substance, then you're a bunch of pure substances mixed together, hence the name mixture. Uh, you cannot represent a mixture by a single chemical formula. So if you look at the ingredients list and there's more than one thing there, you have a mixture. And since the proportions can vary, the properties can vary. My chocolate milk is going to be different than your chocolate milk. Uh, for both making chicken noodle soup using the exact same ingredients, they can still taste vastly different due to proportions. Gold, 
24 karat gold is pure gold, uh, but 14 karat gold, 18 karat gold are proportions of gold and other elements. And so there are two types of mixtures, homogeneous and heterogeneous, and let's see if we can differentiate those. We'll touch on colloids a little bit too at the end. So there we go, it's complete. I'm happy, the koala's happy. See a boy, stop a boy. And so the homogeneous mixture is uniform throughout, um, often called a solution. So the, the diet cola or the, uh, or the tea that you're drinking, if uniform throughout, the gasoline you put in your car, uh, these are mixtures uh, distributed at a molecular level. And so a great example is homogenized milk. Uh, you expect your milk to be uniform throughout. You don't expect different layers in your milk. Uh, one type of homogeneous mixture could be an alloy, by the way. That's a mixture made up of solids. Brass and steel are both alloys. They're homogeneous mixtures of, of copper and zinc and, and iron and carbon, respectively. And those are only, of course, two alloys of, of the many types of alloys that are out there. Heterogeneous mixtures, on the other hand, are not uniformly distributed. That's your chocolate chip cookie. Uh, that's your raisin bran, your salad, uh, most other things. And so different regions can have different compositions. So concrete, oil and vinegar salad, uh, you can look at, you can see the grains of wood. You, you are a giant heterogeneous mixture. Uh, if someone were to come up and bite you like a zombie, uh, each zombie that bit you would get a different taste experience uh, because you are not uniform throughout. Uh, the only way that you would be a homogeneous mixture is if uh, zombies put you in a blender and made a smoothie out of you. And even then, you'd probably be a, a suspension <laughs> where uh, you would probably settle out in the layers after time. And so uh, consider like uh, dirt and water, anything like that, anything you stir up and that would eventually re-separate out, that's a suspension. The oil and vinegar, you could shake it up and they would separate back out into two phases. So there's some dirty water there, maybe some backwash, an Oreo, who knows, let's infer. Uh, lastly, we should probably touch on a colloid. Uh, there are a lot of colloids out there, and uh, I'm not going to dig too deep into this. I, I will find some links for you so that it goes a little deeper than what I want to go here. Um, but essentially, you've got a mixture uh, with, with large particles distributed through another substance. Uh, these particles tend to be very big, uh, yet don't settle out for, for reasons, again, beyond the scope of this introductory lecture. Now, some people would call this homogeneous. Some people would call this heterogeneous. Some people would call this non-homogeneous. Uh, there certainly is, I can't, I can't find any clear argument about where this belongs. It's somewhere on the scale of uh, homogeneous and heterogeneous. But there are many, many things in your everyday life that will call it, qualify as a colloid. Now, if it's transparent enough, you can certainly identify these with something called the Tyndall effect. And again, I will link some good videos to that. But anytime you see a beam passing through a solution, if you physically see the beam there, um, then that would be a Tyndall effect. If you don't see the beam and you only see where the beam is hitting, it's probably not a colloid. And again, I'll, I'll try to find some good links for that. Uh, but that pretty much covers it. That was a very ambitious lesson there. We classified all matter there from pure substances down through. Uh, feel free to review that. Uh, but our next goal will now be to, now that we've got matter, especially now that we have mixtures, uh, let's separate these things out. Thanks for watching and, and have a great day.